Today we are exploring how swimmers can self-coach using resources available online. With the wealth of information on platforms like YouTube, many swimmers are turning to these tools for guidance. But how far can you expect to get when self-coaching? With the right tools and resources, you can make significant progress on your own. So let's get started. So one of the most effective ways to self-coach is by using video analysis. Record your swimming sessions and analyze your strokes frame by frame. So most smartphones allow you to review your footage in slow motion and this visual feedback helps you identify areas for improvement and refine your technique. You do of course need to know what you're looking for, so we do recommend you focus on some key areas. Number one is breath holding. Now this is super common and can cause all sorts of issues with your stroke. Holding your breath can make you feel anxious and like you're not getting enough air in to help fuel those muscles. It also affects the timing of your stroke so your arms and body position get all out of sync. To fix this, focus on breathing out into the water after every breath, so when you turn to breathe, you only need to do one thing, and that's breathe in, not two things, but breathing out and in. Next up is head position. Are you lifting your head too high out of the water, particularly when you turn to breathe? Lifting your head causes your legs to sink lower in the water and that causes a load of drag. So aim to keep your lower goggle in the water when turning to breathe. If you get a mouthful of water, just rotate a little bit further to get a bit more space to take that breath. Next up is stroke rate. Now this is the rate at which your arms turn over in the water. If this drops too low, your power and propulsion can drop so you start to sink. Now we measure stroke rate in strokes per minute. So try to count how many strokes you take in a length and then also time that length. And from that, you'll be able to work out your stroke rate. Now everyone is different, but aim for 60 to 65 as a minimum. You could also use a finished tempo trainer setting on mode three to test and pace your stroke rate. Next is catch, and this is where your propulsion comes from. As much as 90 to 95% of your propulsion comes from your arms catching the water and pushing water back behind you. This is the key here, behind you. Push the water anywhere else and it won't be propelling you forward. So get someone to film you and see whether you're pushing water towards your toes and not down or even forwards. Finally, kicking and body position. Does your body sit low in the water, especially the legs? If so, you need to find a way to get them up. We've already covered some of the courses of low legs like breathing, head position, low stroke rate and poor catch, but it may also be that your kick is causing the problem. Are you kicking from the knees or are you not kicking at all? When you kick, you should be kicking from the hips rather than the knees and a little bit of flex in the knees is okay, but not big 90 degree bends. Also make sure you point your toes, fail to point your toes and you will effectively have a couple of little anchors sitting at the end of each leg. So get someone to film you and take a close look at these areas. Now you find some things to work on through your video analysis, you need to look for drills that target these areas. Now YouTube is full of coaches offering drills for you to follow, so you should be able to find some things to try. But one of the things you'll come up against on YouTube is the fact there's almost too much information and some of those videos may actually contradict others. Now our advice is to find a channel or coach that you like and trust and stick with them. The next issue you may find when swimming drills is whether you are doing them correctly. Now the nature of drills is that you should do them a lot because this ingrains new movement patterns which will hopefully lead to a better stroke but if you do the drills incorrectly it could be actually a waste of time and could make you slower. So get someone to film you doing the drills to make sure they look the same as what you've seen in those videos. Next is consistency. Swimming is a volume sport and the more you do it, the better you should get. Consistency is definitely key when it comes to swimming. And in my experience, if you're serious about improving, two to three swims per week should be a minimum. But whatever point you're at, if you hit a plateau, add another swim session. Also, don't just swim, have structure to your swim sessions. Some sessions should be endurance, so longer and slower. Some should be speed-based and some should be in the middle somewhere with solid longer efforts of say 200 to 400 meters. If you swim long and slow all the time, you will stay slow. The same goes for speed. Just do sprints and you may get faster over short distances, but have no ability to sustain a good pace. 
Finally, make sure you swim regular benchmark swims to make sure you're improving. And we suggest 100, 200 and 400 max efforts on a monthly basis. Warm up beforehand and then give them your best shot. To help you out, I'll pop some training sessions for you to download. Just click the links in the description below. We also post our live squad sessions as short, so subscribe if you want a steady stream of training session ideas. Did you know you can even improve your swimming out of the pool and in the comfort of your own home? Because there's lots of great strength and flexibility exercises you can do at home or in the gym. Now, stretching can improve your range of movement and this in turn can lead to a better stroke with fewer issues with aches, pains and injuries. I'll post a link to a video which we put together which takes you through a short stretch band routine. Next up is Swim Tech. Now, there is a lot of tech out there designed to help you improve your swimming. Brands like Garmin and Polar make watches that give you all sorts of metrics about your stroke. But if you don't mind a bit of data overload, you can spend all day looking at your swim numbers. The key here is knowing what to look for, what it means and how useful it's going to be in improving your stroke. There's even devices like the EO Swim Better that tracks and maps your swimming stroke for stroke. Again, we've made a video about this recently and I'll post a link to that video in the description down below. So take a look at that. Now, as a professional swimming and triathlon coach, I am slightly biased when it comes to how far a self-coached swimmer can get compared to when they work with a professional coach. While self-coaching offers flexibility, it has limitations. And without personalized feedback, it's easy to develop bad habits or overlook critical aspects of technique. Progress may stall and it may lead to frustration. Professional coaches provide tailored feedback and structured training plans that address individual weaknesses and goals. They offer motivation, accountability, and expertise that can accelerate improvement beyond what self-coaching alone can achieve. And at Do3, we work with swimmers on a daily basis and have helped thousands of swimmers across the years through our swim squads and one-to-one -one sessions. Our swim analysis service combines video analysis with expert coaching feedback and we aim to capture footage from multiple angles, analyze it in detail, provide personalized drills to enhance your technique efficiently. If you want to find out more about this service, again, I'll pop a link in the description below. So there you have it, practical strategies for improving your swimming without a coach, along with some insights into the benefits of professional guidance. But with dedication and the right resources, you can make significant strides in your swimming journey. Well, thanks for watching, and I hope you found this video. If you did, don't forget to like and subscribe for more swimming tips and insights. Also, let us know in the comments how you're working on improving your swimming. We'd love to hear from you. That's it for this video, and I'll see you in the next one.